Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today's project we're going to be installing this towel rack or hand towel rack on the wall. Now the first thing you want to do of course is determine where you want to put the towel rack and you want to determine what height it is going to be. Um, now, as you know hand towels come in different lengths so make sure you you put a hand towel on here and measure how high up you want to have it to accommodate whatever hand towels you have. Alright so here's an example of what kind of tools we're going to need to get this job done. We're going to need a drill and I'm not endorsing any of these products this just happens to be the one that I'm using here in my house. All right, the, we need a drill. You may need a ruler to measure where you want to put it. We're going to need a hammer, possibly a couple of screwdrivers, a pencil to put our marks on the wall. We're going to need a stud finder, just, and I'm going to show you why we're going to need that in just a minute. And we're going to need an assortment of drill bits. Now, this particular drill bit we're going to use is going to be a very small one, and then we're going to use one that's a little bit bigger. This is a 5 16 drill bit that we're going to be using if we need to use it. Now when you read the directions, the directions tells you to put the cleat on the wall and it tells you to drill a 5 16 hole in the wall to accommodate these little mollies or wall anchors that they supplied with the unit. I will tell you this, make sure that you don't have a stud behind here because if you have a stud in this location right here, then drilling a 5 16 hole in the wall is not something that you want to do. All right, so first thing we do is take our stud finder and we're going to try to determine if the stud is in the wall or not. Okay, so we'll take our stud finder, and now we're going to try to determine where our stud is located in the wall. So we know there's one stud right there. We know that there's no stud right here. And we have a stud right there. All right, so now we know there's no stud in there. But what if you didn't have this in your, your toolbox? What would you do? Then you would take a small drill bit like this, a very small drill bit, 16th of an inch, 8th of an inch, and then we come up here and drill a very small hole in here to determine if there's a stud behind that location. So let me just show you what, what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is, as I said, we determined what height we wanted to put this already, so we know that. Next we're going to take our, our uh, cleat or bracket that comes with it, and we're going to put it on the wall, and we're going to mark the locations of where we're going to drill it. Okay, so we're going to hold it up here like this. We're going to determine where we want it to put it, and that's where it's going to be. So we're going to put a small little dot right there, and a small little dot right there. So these are the two holes that we're going to drill. We take a very small drill bit, put it in our drill, Now, as I said, we don't know if there's a stud behind here, but we're going to find out when we drill in here. So when we put our drill on that hole and drill very slowly, if there's a stud behind it, it'll hit into the stud and it won't go all the way into the wall. If there's no stud behind it, then it will fall into an empty cavity or a hollow part behind the wall. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, and I just want to explain to you what I was doing. The reason that I went very slowly like that is because there's not supposed to be a stud back in here. According to our stud finder, there is no stud in there. There's a stud there. And there's a stud there. But for some reason, there is a stud right here.
Very strange why there's a stud in here. The only thing I'm thinking is that maybe they put something in here to brace across the wall. But when I drilled the drill into it, as the drill goes into the hole here, it stops. And now it's hitting something in the wall. So I know that there's a piece of wood behind that. So if we had drilled the larger hole, as they said in the directions, the uh, 5 16ths, the problem we would have had is that we would not be able to push this into that hole because there's a piece of wood behind it because you need to open this up like this and push it inside the wall and then it needs to pop open once it's in the wall and it wouldn't pop open because there's a stud in that spot right there. I hope you understand what I'm telling you but that's the problem we would run into. If it was a 5 16 hole in there and we pushed this into the opening and pushed it in it would not pop open because there's no hollow area behind it. It needs a hollow area to open up like that once you put it in the wall and then you push it with the tool that comes provided like this and it opens it up in the wall. But that would not be able to, to happen with this one. All right, so now we're going to take our screw and we're going to put the bracket on the wall. Okay, so now after we drill the holes in the wall here where we're going to put our bracket, like this. We're going to take our screw, put it in here. Now you can screw it in with a regular screwdriver or you can use an electric screwdriver. It's personal choice. If you're, if you have an electric screwdriver and you're not going to screw it in too tight and damage the, the uh, area you're screwing it into, then of course you can use the uh, electric screwdriver. And we're just going to screw it in just like this. Now before you make it tight, get your second screw. To get your second screw started in here as well, just like this, and screw it in. And you'll feel when it goes in, you'll feel when it hits the stud behind it because it gets very tight. Now it's going in very easy, and then you can feel it get a little tighter. Now I am going to lose, use the electric screwdriver to run it in a little bit further. Be careful you don't over tighten it and damage the wall itself. Okay, so now our bracket is now mounted on the wall. Next, we're going to take our towel ring that we're going to put on there. We're going to go on the bottom right here, and you can see a very small hole in the bottom. They give you a small screw like this that has thread sealer on it. You can see the thread sealer. Once it screws in, that thread sealer will keep this from moving out. As it's, as it's on the wall for a period of time. So we're just going to go in here and catch it. Only a couple of threads. Just enough to hold it in place. Once you feel it catch, we're going to stop. Put it on the wall here. Get it from the top like this. And slide it down like that. And now we're going to screw that screw on the bottom there until it's snug up against it. Now you don't have to make it really super tight. You just want to snug it in there until it's touching. So we're going to go just a, a little quarter turn at a time, just like that. Okay, so now our towel rack is on. You don't want to tighten it too tight and strip it out because it only is a very soft metal. But that's it. The towel rack is on, and then this job is done. So let's, uh, let's put a hand towel on there and make sure it's in the correct location. And that's it. You can see that there's plenty of clearance between the sink and where the towel goes. And if you have one that's a little longer later on, it'll fit on there perfectly as well. All right, but that's it. This job is done. The only thing I'm going to tell you is that make sure you don't over tighten it too tight because once you over tighten it too tight, you're going to definitely have a problem. It's going to strip it out. Make sure your Allen key is pushed into the to the small little lock pin all the way and you'll be in good shape. But that's it. This job is done and we're on to the next one. All right. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.